Hey there, welcome to Charting Toward Intimacy, where we're expanding the natural family planning conversation. I'm your host, Ellen Holloway. All right, we are welcoming Amy Carney to the podcast. Amy, welcome. Hello, thank you for having me. Awesome. I'm so excited to have you here. And um, Amy's going to be telling us about kind of her journey with NFP, her story. Um, And so Amy, could you just start by telling us a little bit about yourself and what you do? Oh, yes. Wonderful. Thank you. I am a fertility care practitioner for the Creighton model system. Actually, I have been um, teaching women this system for about 17 years now. Um, I am a uh, been married for 20 years. We have eight uh, beautiful children, um, three in heaven, which is part of my story. And uh, I'm also a woman's school strategist. Awesome. And if you haven't heard of, if you're listening and you're like the woman's school, what is that? I'll totally put a link in there. It's fantastic. (laughs) But this is not a podcast about the woman's school. We could go on talking about that for a long time. (laughs) (laughs) But we're talking about NFP and fertility awareness. Um, so Amy, tell me when, um, when did you first hear about fertility awareness and NFP? Okay. So Amy, tell me, when did you first hear about, uh, fertility awareness and NFP? Okay. So actually, um, when we were engaged, my husband had been raised Catholic and had gone through all through 12 years of Catholic school. I was actually had been raised Baptist. I had never, never, ever heard of NFP. Didn't even know what it was, but I was looking at my family planning options and, um, you know, most people had said in my life growing up, they had said, well, you know, when you get married, you just take the pill. That's just what you do. It was the responsible way to plan your family. So Mm -hmm. I just thought, okay, that's what I'll do. I'll, I'll probably do that. But then I started reading about it. I started noticing the side effects, increased risk for heart attack, stroke, cancer, um, the breast cancer, uh, 75% increased risk of breast cancer. I was like, yeah, I knew it decreased your risk for some types of cancers, but it increased your risk for other types. And I used to say, okay, well, what kind of cancer do I want? You know, and I wasn't really, I didn't really know anything about this. And so, and my husband, um, somehow, I don't know if someone taught something about theology of the body or NFP to him, but it went over his head. He never heard it really either. The only thing that um, we knew was we were, we were hearing through uh, the grapevine, like, oh, Catholics shouldn't use birth control. And I think I had heard that, but I didn't really know anything about it. So that's where we were. Um, Spiritually, we didn't know anything about it. Mm -hmm. And um, I just started thinking the side effects did not sound too great. And my husband was the same way. He said, okay, wanting to be the protector of his future bride. He's like, well, what are you supposed to do? Take this stuff until, you know, you're in your like fifties, except for like the, you know, a few times we have children. Um, so I went to an OBGYN and thankfully it was, um, just the grace of God. It was an older gentleman. And typically if I had come to him and said, well, I'm concerned with the side effects, he probably would have said, oh, you know, just take the low dose pill or let's do the IUD or something like that. And he said, well, actually there's only a very short period of time each month that a woman is fertile. And he basically told me what I call old school NFP, which was the rhythm method. Yeah. You just count a certain amount of days. He said, you know, from day one to day 15, then you just don't have intercourse on days 15, 16, and 17. And I said, well, that's really easy. Why doesn't everyone do that then? Like I'm having a doctor tell me this. I believe it's, it's correct. You know, I'm like, uh-huh. okay, why doesn't everybody do that? That's so easy. Like, okay. So we obviously didn't have any sort of spiritual um, formation in the at that time of you know, discerning our plan and our plan was to uh have a baby in a couple of years i was still in college i was 20 finishing up college i was 22 he was uh, 24 so we was like okay we have our plan we're going to wait a couple of years well we get married and instead of two years we were pregnant in two months <laughs> and i was like what what? Well, maybe I counted wrong or something, but of course we were so happy. We were so happy. We we're excited. You know, um, obviously we didn't have a serious reason to avoid pregnancy because we were like super excited. We yeah. moved around to fit this baby into everything, you know, it was going to be great. Um, sadly, <clears throat> we lost the baby, um, three months into the pregnancy, oh. um, around, around 13 weeks and, um, went into full blown labor and it was very, it was very traumatic for us and ended up in the ER and, um, 
long story for that as well that I very much encourage women to, um, if you haven't known anybody who's had a miscarriage, like to reach out. No one told us things about that, how to deal with that. And um, so sadly, after that, though, and grieving, being able to name that baby and and move forward, we realized that we really wanted to become parents. And so we went back to the OBGYN and we said, well, what do we do? And he said, oh, you know, give your body about three months to get back to normal and then you can try again. So we went back to calendar rhythm, which is the old school NFP method. (laughs) And instead of um, three months, we were pregnant in two. And I said, okay, now I know I counted right this time. I, (laughs) I circled the days on the calendar. And I said, Honey, I, know I, counted I, right. I know I did it right this time. And, and thankfully, like everything went beautifully with that pregnancy. Um, we, thanks be to God. Our, our oldest is uh, 19 now. And she's actually living in Spain in a, in a convent right now. We're so proud. She's discerning for religious life. So keep her beautiful. In and so we had her. And then um, when she was about six weeks old, we were kind of like, okay, well, what do we do now? I mean, what, I mean, just probably, I'm probably going to get pregnant right away. I had some trouble breastfeeding, so that wasn't going well. And I, um, anyways, a friend who must have maybe paid attention in the class in Catholic high school, it was friends with my husband, or maybe they mentioned something about NFP and, and the boy, my husband, you know, as a young guy didn't hear it. I don't know. Anyway, she said, there's a lady that goes around and teaches a modern method of natural family planning. Now, by this time, I had- I love the way that this is presented to you. There's this lady who teaches yeah. this modern method. Yeah. And here, and by this time, I had, you know, in our journey, I had entered RCIA. I had become Catholic. We had opened up this whole, what is this open to life? Like we heard this amazing talk and this catechism class at church and we were just on fire. He had sponsored a boy in RCIA, a younger, uh, young, uh, like high school kid. And I had gone through. So we were just, we had learned so much, our faith life, our eyes had just been peeled open. I mean, it was just amazing. Um, and so that's when we were like, okay, well, health wise, I know I don't want to do this, but also now I see where, you know, I can see now that God created the marriage and the marital act, we both life-giving and love-giving. And we were meeting all kinds of couples who used NFP and we were finding them to be like really happy couples, at least in our experience. I know that can be different in everyone, but we had seen that. Um, And so we, we were told about this lady who teaches the Creighton model system. So we went and we learned the Creighton model and I was blown away by it. I just loved it. The first intro session, I'm like, yes, this is what I was looking for. Something that's in line with church teaching. It's modern it's it's developed by doctors and scientists it's 100 safe and natural and if i do have a serious reason to avoid pregnancy it's 99.5 percent effective in right. avoiding pregnancy. so i'm like okay this is what i need um so we we were using that and then we had um our second child everything went fine with that and then we started to see um changes in my hormones and I ended up losing two more babies and we were like, what is going on? And then, uh, we were able to get in touch with a NAPRO technology physician. And I was starting to experience even symptoms like anxiety and, um, just, uh, hot flashes and night sweats and all these weird, I didn't know what was going on. And turns out my hormones were not really doing what they're supposed to do, right? My body was not making what I needed to make. And so the devastating loss now of, you know, all these babies, we didn't want to go through that again. And so we were able to just with my hormones and our pregnancies. And then I decided, you know what, maybe I should teach this. I had so many people I was referring to the Creighton teacher that I had. I I kind of have a knack for sales. My husband said I should have been in sales. If I like something, (laughs) I tell everybody about it. I think they all should you know, oh, you would love this. And um, so she got to the point where she couldn't take all the people I was sending to her. And <laughs> She's I, like, Amy, stop. <laughs> yeah. And then I had, you know, here is me, like stay at home mom, two little ones. And I had friends being like, hey, why don't you, why don't you sell uh, Pampered Chef or Mary Kay? And nothing wrong with those. But I, someone approached me about like, well, why don't you teach NFP? And I said, I think I actually might, I should do this. I should teach NFP. And so um, 
the NFP teacher that I was seeing, she called the diocese and they literally were at my house like two days later, like the diocese, like the director of family life came to my house and had dinner with us. And I was going to Omaha like the next month. It was so fast. And, wow. and but I felt very at peace about it. And God worked it out to a great time where we could go. I was um, able to go train directly at the Institute with Dr. Thomas Hilger. So I was very blessed by that. Fantastic. Um, it's been a wonderful journey. And then I ended up um, just through that became um, the director of our center here, uh, First Coast Fertility Care. We have um, five practitioners with us and three NAPRO physicians now. And we also, um, I'm the uh, NFP coordinator for our diocese here. And I'm on the NFP task force for the state of Florida. And I just, it's been just a gift. Like I am truly just honored that God has allowed me on the journey with all these women and all this time. And it's truly helped my own life. So I'm very very grateful. I will say going back to the marriage part. So we, um, when we were first married, they asked us to be part of a um, development of a newly married couples uh, retreat. They wanted to form, or what they wanted to make one, to create one. So they invited like uh, five or six couples, young married couples to come in. And the older couple that was running the group was standing there brainstorming. And they said, okay, all right, we want to know like nothing leaves this room. We want to know the problems you face in your marriages. And now we'd all been using NFP. Like we were married anywhere, anybody from like, a, you know, newly married to like five years. This is mm -hmm. how long time at that time. And everybody uh, just was kind of crickets. There wasn't really much going on in the room. And the lady said, okay, no, like nothing leaves the room. Tell us the problems you face. And we all just still really didn't have very much. And the, the couple left the room. We could see them outside talking. I think they were thinking, great, we picked the wrong people. They won't even op open up and tell us stuff. And then they came back in. And one of my friends said, well, and she was actually experiencing infertility at the time. I had been married for five years. They hadn't been able to have any children yet. And she said, look, I can, I can tell you the problems that my friends face. But I mean, honestly, he's my best friend and we're happy. And we started talking amongst ourselves and we found that we all had different um, jobs, different, you know, backgrounds, uh, some experiencing infertility, some, you know, trying to space pregnancy, but the common denominator was that we were all using NFP. And I found that really interesting. And I, and I still will say back then I thought it, I said, these are the couples I expect to be see walking down the beach holding hands at 80 years old. I, and I will fast forward now 20 years. I still know those couples. We've been married for 20 years, almost 21. And I still see it. And yeah. it's, it's definitely a grace. Um, I, you know, half my bridal party, unfortunately, like they already been divorced, you know, and I, I see the differences in these couples. Um, I definitely don't attribute it to just NFP. I will say like we dive heavily into the sacraments of the church. Um, we pray together, you know, all of those things as a family and as a couple, but it has definitely um, been a tool in our marriage that God has used um, for his glory and to give us like, I mean, I, my husband and I give marriage talks all the time and we say, definitely we are more in love today than we were on our wedding day. And, it's, and it gets better every year. It's absolutely true. But I know that's not the case for all couples of NFP. And in fact, I just did a um, live Instagram the other night on challenges that couples face <laughs> NFP, because I know that is also true. Yeah. Um, and so we actually did a talk on that the other day. It went really well, but it was, it was fun to kind of sit and, and just, just focus on that. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Just focus on the, on the other side. Yeah. Yes. Cause sometimes you hear all the good, but you don't hear the not so good, the challenging part. Right. Well, and I think that's what we're really trying to do on this podcast is share both sides. We're not just here to complain about how we don't like NFP and we don't like abstinence and blah, blah, blah. But we're also not here to say, look, NFP is this like perfect, um, right like band-aid that's just gonna um fix all your marriage problems and you know I sometimes hear it touted that way um even in in my own diocese um working in uh, marriage prep ministry and and I just hear that and I'm like whoa 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 NFP is not the reason NFP is what you just said Amy a tool that um definitely leads to really truly helping um, to establish your relationship in a deeper way. I think there's a lot of communication that comes with NFP use. Um, 
that can really help build and foster a deep relationship with your spouse. Um, but then kind of what you were also saying, Amy was like, if you're using NFP, you're probably pretty all in with everything else (laughs) that the church teaches. And so you're all in on the sacraments. You're getting your children baptized. You're going to regular confession. You're going to mass as a family. You know, you're, you're, you're doing these things that foster beautiful community and relationship. And so, yeah, NFP is not the reason, right? but it is a tool and it is a reason and, and it is a beautiful thing to bring into your marriage and use, um, and, and helps you just really, truly align yourself to God's design of our bodies. Um, and just, and truly, really be able to understand, you know, what is the point of sex? Like that's one of our deepest, uh, ways that we can communicate with our spouse. But if we truly don't understand what that communication aspect is, is really about, then we're not going to be able to utilize it fully. And so NFP kind of opens that up for us a little bit and helps us to really understand a little better. And then, you know, if you go theology of the body, you really are going to open it up and start to understand it a little bit better. But I think NFP can be that doorway. I really got on a, on a soapbox over there. Oh my gosh. Oh, no, I love that. It's so <laughs> true. And, and I love even the title of your like charting towards intimacy. Cause I think that's very true. And I think um, my husband jokes about he says, if you use, uh, when you're using NFPs, like it really does open the communication doors. Cause he, he goes, if you could talk about cervical mucus, you could talk about anything. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very true. You know? Um, and I do, and, and I know, um, for me personally, I remember going through, uh, in uh, marriage prep and we went on an engaged encounter retreat. And I remember this lady, she was, I don't know how old she was. I mean, of course here I am 22, right. She was probably like I don't know. She's probably like 50. I remember just thinking she was really old now. And I'm so, um, <laughs> now I'm in my, you know, early forties here and I'm like, Oh yeah. Okay. That's probably me now compared to her, you know, but I remember her saying in this marriage prep and an engagement encounter, she said, when my husband and I come together and she said, and when I have an orgasm, I feel the closest to God. And I remember going, what? <laughs> What did she what did just like say? Talking about? Are you kidding me? Like, that's weird. Like I, I was so, I was like, what? And then now my husband and I, we have grown so much deeper in our understanding of the marital act, like, and what it is, what it truly, truly mm-hmm. is. If I were to have just listened to the world and like what, you know, sex is all about, then I would, I would be so sad for myself uh, because it is it is not that it is definitely a renewal of your marriage, you know, your, your wedding vows and coming together. And, um, I think we've even had certain prayers that we prayed, you know, to help us with, to growing closer in intimacy, uh, through, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Dr. Bob shoots and, uh, his healing the whole person retreats in Tallahassee, the John Paul II healing center. And oh, yes. A lot of those, um, sort of healing prayers. And, uh, it's just, it just gets better. It gets better every year and it should be, it should be that way. And, um, I remember Janet Smith, I went to the uh, 50th anniversary, the symposium in DC uh, for Humani Vitae a few years ago. So uh, Janet Smith, when she was on the Q&A, this this young lady got up, was asking questions. And Dr. Janet Smith said that most women or most couples actually have never experienced truly natural sex. And how, if, if they did, they would know why a bigger reason as to why they would not want to take hormonal contraceptives and how that it, yeah. changes, it changes it completely. And so um, I think uh, I remember this young woman getting up too, and she was saying, but, but Dr. Smith, like, what, what do I do? I feel like when I, she was saying, when I want to be with my husband, the most is when I can't, because I'm trying to space pregnancy. And I, and I also um, had to really contemplate that myself because recently Um, one of my, a a religious sister that I know, she was saying, Amy, you and Shannon should touch. That's kind of what prompted my talk on Instagram of, of facing challenges with NFP that my husband and I did a a couple of weeks ago, Um, because she said, you and Shannon, my his name is Shannon. You seem to have be thriving in NFP. She said, but I meet a lot of Catholic couples who are really struggling. This sister said, and she said, and how are you guys, how is it that you're just embracing it? so much. What are you doing that's helping? And so we really sat and talked about that. And um, like I said, we'll probably go more into it in my Instagram, but 
it's, it's a lot longer, but I think definitely there is um, just a release of, of control for us. Like, I think sometimes people can, I'm not saying they get a contraceptive mentality with NFP, but I think just being able to really, truly being able to say with your heart, like Jesus, I trust in you, Mm. you know, to know that his way is better. And I think for us as a couple, there definitely were times where, especially when, you know, um, well, I, I was, I'll say when you're younger, it, maybe it's harder, but I'm like, no, actually, no, it's the, <laughs> like I said, if you are healthy and you're taking care of yourself and you, you know, your, uh, your drive and your want, you know, the to, attraction to each other should grow, it should grow. And so I think that's, but we have learned, I think to just be more um, masters of ourself which is another gift of NFP is self-control. Mm-hmm. It really is. I mean, just like we want to eat ice cream all day long when we're kids, <laughs> we want to eat ice cream all day long, right? But we- I mean, I still want to eat ice cream all day long. I know, long, right? I'll be honest. But we, yeah, but we tell the children like, no, not, not all the time, you know? Um, and I think uh, as we grow older, we can understand like, okay, well, it's okay to have ice cream and have ice cream, but like in moderation and I can have self-control. And I'm not saying sex is like ice cream. I'm not comparing that. I'm just talking about the <laughs> Okay. Like the self-control being able to I remember a couple I met one time that, that they had a really um, challenging pregnancy with their fourth baby. They thought they'd go on to have a lot of baby, more babies than that. And their fourth one, um, the doctor said, no more, this is so dangerous. Like you cannot have any more babies. And so they had to stop. Um, having children and it was very challenging for them and um that they they you you know sometimes you've got you've got those fertile days and you're like oh we'll just see what happens you know yeah. they were like, we can't do that anymore and I remember her telling me we're offering up for all of the couples that we know experiencing infertility the times that we can't be together and I found that very inspiring and we've been able to do that as well but also just being able to take it to prayer like what are you do you want us to have even just one more baby for you? You know, just being open to that. And I, I tell couples, this is just my experience. Okay. Of being married 20 years and everybody's story is different. And I can't make everybody happy with my story. There may be things in my story that y'all don't like, and that's fine. Okay. But part of the woman's goal, you can talk about the woman's goal. If you want to know more about not caring about other people's opinions. But okay. So I, um, I, I, I will just say from my own experience is that if you don't have a serious reason to avoid pregnancy, and you don't have any hormonal reasons to, you know, chart, just honestly throw the charts out the window and, <laughs> and just love each other. Well, and just, I, you know, I have a, another friend that we know has been married for uh, with many, many years with 14 kids. And they said, we just love each other and we love each other. Well, and I don't think everybody is called to that. I mean, God calls certain families to that. And we have different, like I said, everybody has different stories um, for us personally. I had to chart because I have hormonal issues, right? Or reproductive abnormalities. I needed to know when I was pregnant so that I could make sure that baby made it. Honestly, yeah. I could get to whatever I needed um, with NAPRO. And actually later in life, thanks be to God, figured out natural ways to balance my hormones where I didn't need to take uh, progesterone and NAPRO anymore. Um, but it, in, in the middle of that, I did. And so everybody has a different story. And I think but I think you just, that's why you really have to take it to prayer. And mm, if it is yes. a challenging time for you um, in spacing, I, I, I love that book, um, Dr. Gregory, is it pop check? I can never say his name properly, but oh, the, Holy Sex. Holy Sex. I that love book that book. is phenomenal. Yes. I think it has a lot of great information in there for couples and, and praying and discerning like what God's really calling them to yes. and um, in the chapter in there when it talks about, um, you know, struggling with NFB. There's a great chapter in there, but I think that's how, that's how we've done it. It's just really, um, truly trusting. Even I will share one quick little story at our, at our sixth pregnancy. Um, we, I developed cholestasis of pregnancy, which is a rare complication where my bowel was leaking into my bloodstream from my liver and gallbladder. And they said, okay, Amy, this is why my NAPRO doctor, you know, doc, Catholic doctor said, this is where we, when we need NFP, like no more, Amy, this is serious. Uh, this causes hemorrhages in the mother. Um, the babies, these babies die 38 weeks with no, um, warning. You know, I, I think, 
I think it's time to, to, to stop and just keep your bleeding keeps getting worse after each birth. So we were, we were sad. I don't, you know, you would think after six babies, we're like, okay, we're good. Okay. It's good. You know, like, no, we yeah. were kind of sad. We just didn't feel like that's what was on our hearts to be just done, but we got rid of all the baby stuff. We're like, all right, but we kept it in prayer. And I started doing research because um, I like to say I'm a woman of solution, you know, pray like mm-hmm. it all on God, but work like it all depends on you. And I started doing research and, um, I found lots of, uh, natural ways. And I found a lot of, um, holistic doctors here that helped me, um, to just get in better health and to be able to, that was what helped balance my hormones. And I went back to my doctor and I said, you know, we've prayed about it and we really don't feel like God is saying we're done. And he said, well, what are we going to do? And he's very pro-life. He's like, all right, if you get pregnant, what are we going to do? I mean, we're going to have a baby. And so <laughs> I said, well, I just feel like I've done everything humanly possible to get myself in better health. And I, I just, you know, he said, okay, but it's 90% likely you're going to get it again. Mm-hmm. He's it's genetic. I'm like, okay, well, but I had a lot of other natural doctors tell me, yeah, sometimes you can be genetically predisposed to something, but you can still do something about it. I'm like, all right. So anyways, we got pregnant with baby number seven and I did all the things that everybody was telling me to do. And I never got it. Wow. The baby was born. My doctor came in. He said, okay, I don't know what you did, all this natural stuff, but you need to write a book because <laughs> I, this does not make sense to me. He said, I'm even testing your levels today. Like after the baby's born, your liver enzymes are all completely normal. I don't get it. Um, so then we went on to have baby number eight, same thing, did it all, you know, and I feel like it was just because we kept it in prayer. We yeah. Really we kept it in prayer. And, um, those last two babies that we have right now wouldn't be here if it weren't for that. Well, and, and NFT, the- cause I could have, you know what, with my, my mindset prior, I could have said, well, I'm done after my three babies. And I always tell people when they say to me, well, are you going to have more? And I'm like, I'm so grateful that I didn't do like what a lot of my peers do and just be like, I'm done. Let me get my tubes tied. Let's get a yeah. second. Like we're done because I wouldn't know how wonderful baby number five was baby, yeah. baby number six. I wouldn't know. And God gives you the grace. You know, he really does. I know it can be challenging to be a mom. It's hard when you have two, it's hard when you have, you know, seven, but it honestly, I will say right now, I was thinking that yesterday. It's actually, I think easier when you have older kids. And, and then somebody said to me, oh, that's because you say they all, they all raise each other. They all take care of each other. I said, actually, no, I'm very good about making sure that that's not the case. Um, the way we raise, I was an only child. So I make sure that they get their own time. They all help. Yes. But that's good. I didn't right. know. I, Chores I are good. I took a frozen pizza when I got married. Everybody did everything for me. <laughs> So I just think there's a balance. And and like I said, my story is different than everyone, but we've just found it to be um, a grace. I'm so grateful. I will be grateful for all of eternity that God, you know, allowed it into our lives. And I'm, I'm grateful for all the women that come to me uh, and I've been able to guide them through Creighton. And um, just every time I, I meet people, I, I, they say something like, oh, that I have like seven-year-old this is the lady that helped us get you here. And I, and I don't even think about it that way. And I always just say, no, God just allowed me to be on the journey, honestly. But I don't think we'll ever know till heaven, like what a gift, especially I, I'm partial. Of course, I love all methods of NFP, but not for technology. Like I'll just, we won't even know Dr. Hilders. I'm sure is the saint. We won't even know. Yeah, probably. <laughs> heaven we won't know till heaven oh man well you know one of the things before we close out that I just want to kind of retouch on that you mentioned Amy was it's it's my personal favorite thing about NFP is that I never I, I will never say the words like I am done because that's not my choice right and that's not what God is calling us to um I might say something along the lines of like well, that was, you know, th- this is plenty of kids for me. Like, right? like I might think, okay, that's probably it, but I-, I never have to shut the door completely. And I just love the fact that it always allows God to be able to come back in and say, actually, I really want you to have one more because they're going to be this amazing person. And <laughs> I just, I just love that beautiful what a gift what a blessing to be able to allow 
him into our marriages in that way. Yes. Yes, exactly. Well, and that's truly, you know, bringing God into the bedroom, like Mm -hmm. that phrase that people are like, oh, I don't want God in my bedroom and stuff like that. And it's like, no, we actually really, really do. We want him in every single aspect of our lives. (laughs) We need him in every single aspect of our lives. And especially when it comes to our marriage and our family and our communication, um, we, we need him to be there blessing us, um, and, and helping guide us on the path that he wants to take us on because his plan is way better than ours every single time. Amen. Very true. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Oh, Amy, it's been such a pleasure to hear your story. And I, I know that your story is going to resonate with others. Um, just, uh, I think partially in the fact that you've been able to lovingly bring NFP into your marriage, make it a part of your marriage, um, for so long. And that is just so beautiful. And, um, you know, I, I aspire to that someday I will be there, <laughs> Yeah. I'm only, I'm only four years in. So oh, amazing. Oh, so sweet. I love it. So great. Oh, Amy, was there anything else you wanted to add before we close out? I think I, I have kept your time. I, I went, I, yeah, I could talk about this all day long. I love, <laughs> I love it. Well, maybe we'll just have to bring you back on and we'll talk about, yeah, I would love to it's great. <laughs> we'll talk about more. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Amy. Okay. All right. God bless. Bye-bye. Thanks so much for listening. Uh, Links to some of the things we talked about in this episode are in the show notes if you want to learn more. And a link to reach out to Amy on Instagram is also in the show notes. If you ever have any questions or comments about an episode, please feel free to reach out to me. I love talking with you guys. My email is in the show notes, and you can always reach out on Instagram at Charting Toward Intimacy. Until next time. 